Also YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr Games, bringing you today the question that you all want the answer to, and that is to buy or not to buy the brand new corset of Blazing Vortex. Now, we've started to see the leaks over the past few days, and we also have seen a lot of openings. Now, we do not know, as of yet recording this video, the five Starlight Rares. We do know that Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, will be the legacy card that is going to be in Starlight. But what we do know are all 10 of the secret rares. We also know a good handful of the ultra rares and a good handful of the TCG imports. So pretty much we know the majority of the set, if not all of it, by now. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take you through reasons why you may want to buy the set, why you wouldn't want to buy the set, the cards that are included, um, and kind of go from there. The chase cards uh, and the cards that are maybe a slow burning investment. With that out of the way, if you want to see more videos like this and you want to see more just general content from the channel, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe. I do also have a very special announcement as part of a brand new series being involved with a lot of other YouTubers as well. So stay peeled for that one. Now let's get into today's review or the general uh, breakdown of Blazing Vortex. Blazing Vortex is the brand new core set coming out at the end of January, technically first week of February. Now why should you go and buy or not buy Blazing Vortex? Well let's start off with the 10 secrets. Now the 10 secrets that we are already aware of is that we have uh, two chase cards in the Pot of Prosperity and the Underworld Goddess of the Closed Worlds. Uh, link 5 on that one and obviously Pot of uh, Prosperity is of course going to be the new Pot of Extravagance in a very, very nice sense. There are two Armed Dragon Secrets, one that allows you to special summon an Armed Dragon uh, level 3 or lower from the deck and the other one is a big ass boss monster of the Armed Dragon or Armed Thunder Dragon level 10. We then move into uh, Security or S-Force, uh, and I'm sorry to say for you guys, S-Force as an art type has the most of the higher rarities. It has two Secrets and three Ultras. Now, understandably so, the Secrets are, of course, the Field Spot and pretty much their Utility card that allows you to get everything moving. Now, we'll go more into depth of exactly what these cards will do once we get to them uh, a little bit later on. The remaining four secrets, one of them is of course the War Rock, the brand new TCG exclusive field spell. Uh, we then also have uh, the Golden Lord. So it's, I say Golden Lord, I'm just going to grab my document here. It's actually called Eldritch the Mad Golden Lord. So this is the Eldritch Fusion Monster. Uh, we then have Heavenly Zephyr um, Miradora. I want to call it Midoriya but I don't think it works that way. Uh, then we've got another exclusive in the form of Underdog. And a lot of you when it first, or not a lot of you, but some of you were kind of like, oh, this is amazing. But when you stop and actually read it, the deck doesn't become live until your third turn. Like that's, well, not your third turn, but the third turn of gameplay, which is very, very slow. Uh, and that is pretty much all 10 secrets that we know of uh, in the game or in Blazing Vortex. So let's start off with the chase cards. Now, the two chase cards, in my opinion, are going to be Underworld Goddess of the Closed World and Pot of Prosperity. Now, uh, I think Pot of Prosperity is going to be the number one card, uh, and the reason for that behind it is you can banish three or six from your extra deck, and it's not like Pot of Extravagance, you actually get to choose what you banish, and you banish them face down, which is a bit different to Pot of Extravagance, um, because you don't get to choose. The other thing that Pot of Prosperity does for you is it allows you to look at, so banish three or six cards of your choice, from your extra deck face down. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, any damage your opponent takes is halved. Also, excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of banished cards. Add one excavated card to your hand, place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. You can only activate once per turn. Now, the big difference is between this and Part of Extravagance. Part of Extravagance lets you draw two random cards, unless, of course, you've found a way to stack your deck during the start of the main phase. This pot can be played at any point in your turn, uh, whereas Pot of Strength needs to be played at the start. This card lets you choose which card you banish. Pot of Extravagance means you have to banish the top three or six. This card only lets you add one, but it lets you add a one of six rather than a random two, just a random two off the top. Like, no brainer on that one. Now, the half damage is a little bit 
disappointed for the OTK deck. So if you like Dinos, I'd probably say you might still play Extravagance. Maybe. Um, but it really depends on, on the route you want to go with. If you're going for OTK base, Extravagance is probably going to be a little bit better for you and a little bit more consistent with your strategy. Whereas a card like Pops Prosperity is still going to be very, very good. And you're still being able to banish from your extra deck, but you kind of adapt your extra deck or, or your play style or what you banish on what you might be facing. So if you feel, right, okay, I, my hand's good enough, I'm not going to need these boss monsters, or my hand's good enough, I don't need these starters. You kind of work it from there. Pop source priority, I expect to be around the 60 pound mark, if not a little bit higher. Now, while we don't have physical play, I kind of want them to be a little bit lower than they should do, but I still think Pop's Prosperity is going to be your most expensive secret. Then we move on to what I think would be the second most expensive secret, and that is Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Now, why do I think this is going to be the second most? Because it is generic. It is technically a super poly, in a sense, for Link Monsters. Now, there was a question when it released to the OCG if you could use your opponent's IP Mascarina, um, and if your IP, your OP Mascarina could go into this card and both of them have been confirmed that you can. So it requires, it is a Link 5, 3000 attack. It requires four plus effect monsters specifically, meaning you could only really use one of your opponent's monsters, or you can only use one of your opponent's monsters, but it means you still need to put a minimum of three of your monsters on the board, um, because you can only make this with a Link, not a Link 2, but you can make it with a Link 2, 3 or 4, but you just can't count them as their Link ratings, basically. So you can only use one monster your opponent controls as material to link summon this card. If this card is link summoned, you can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls. This link summon card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects unless they target this card. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that special summons a monster or monsters from the graveyard, quick effect, negate the activation. Now it doesn't destroy, it just negates the activation, but what you see with this is if you make IP Mascarina and your opponent puts three monsters, uh, not three monsters on the board, if you make IP Mascarina and you get two more monsters on the board, you can then use your opponent's final monster to make the five. Uh, and then that straight away allows you to go into this monster that is going to be a full skill drain on the board and then can negate any graveyard effects. Going second with this card, what you can do is if your opponent has an IP Mascarina, um, you put three monsters on the board, you can then without giving them a response window to allow them to chain their IP Mascarina. Obviously, you make your third summon. If your opponent doesn't do anything, you just go, okay, IP Mascarina. And you take away their IP Mascarina. You take away your three monsters. So, obviously, little tip. After this comes out, the chances are, if your opponent summons a third monster and goes anything with your IP Mascarina, chances are the next move they're going to make is they're going to use your IP Mascarina to make this card so it can't be destroyed by card effect. Still a very, very good card, very, very powerful, and the fact that it is generic is what makes it a utility card and what means to me why it will be the second highest uh, secret in the set. Now we look at the other secrets as well. We're going to go over quickly the Armed Dragons. Uh, so obviously the spell card, like I mentioned about that, is it allows you to special summon a uh, Armed Dragon level 3 or lower from your deck. So for those Armed Dragon players, it's going to be an abusable, um, very, very important spell card for them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see this being, it's not a meta contender, it's not a game changer. Um, it is specific for the armed dragons. It might have been good in Dragon Link because it technically is a free special summon of a dragon monster. Um, but still, I, I don't feel that this is going to be like the 40, 60 pounds mark. I think all the other secrets, in my opinion, could arguably be sold for 10 pound and you wouldn't even really bat an eyelid. 10 pound or less. Anyway, uh, Armed Dragon Thunder level 10. If this card was special summoned by the effect of an Armed Dragon monster, it gains the following effect based on its attack. Now, this card actually looks badass. I really, really want to get a copy. Uh, so, one, its name becomes Armed Dragon level 10. 10 or more control of this card cannot be switched. 100 or more can't be destroyed by battle. 1,000 or more once per opponent's turn. Quick effect, send one card from your hand to the graveyard. Um, then target one other card on the field, destroy it. And if you do, this card gains 1,000 attack. 10,000 or more, once per turn you can destroy all other cards on the field. Going to be very, very difficult to get to that level. Still a very, very nice and uh, utility card. Let's look at the S-Forces. Now, obviously, the S-Forces, like I said, they have uh, three Ultra Rares, two of them, um, and two Secret Rares. Now, understandably so, the Secret Rares are the utility cards in the deck. You've got your Field Spell, uh, and then you've got your Utility Monster. I'm just trying to get the Field Spell up for you guys now. Um, but obviously the, the whole idea behind the security forces, they are column based. Again, this is one of those uh, one of those decks which are really fun in the kind of the presence, but they don't look like they've got much meta potential. So although the S-Force Rapper, which is the monster, um, so each of your opponent's monsters in the same column as one of your S-Force monsters can only target that monster for attack, 
Quick effect, you can banish one S-Force card from your hand, return this card to the hand, and if you do, special on one S-Force monster from your deck in defense decision, except itself. Only use the effect once per turn. Now, so you can see the utility of this, it allows you to kind of um, special summon out S-Force monsters from your deck, it allows you to bounce cards, gives you a bit more utility in play. Um, again, I think this is gonna be a 15 pound to maybe a little bit down to a 10 pound card. Um, it's not a meta definer, it's not a meta relevant card, um, but it could have future support. And it's definitely going to be one that fans are going to want to pick up, but again, isn't going to break the bank, in my opinion, or it shouldn't break the bank. You've then got S-Force Bridgehead. When this card is activated, you add one S-Force monster. Now, any card that is a rotor, even if it is a field spell, is always going to be a secret or always going to be a chase card for that particular deck. So when an opponent's monster declares an attack on your S-Force monster in the same column, you can activate this effect. That monster you control cannot be destroyed by that battle. Only use this effect once per turn, so you're only going to be able to protect one S-Force. Again, I don't think it's going to be a meta-defining card. I still think it's a very, very good card but I, for the deck specifically, but again, it is deck-specific. And when you look at cards that are deck-specific, um, unless it is a meta-relevant card that is going to completely change the game and make the deck become tier zero, it's not going to be, or it shouldn't be, demanding high values of money. Well, then look at Elrich the Mad Golden Lord. Um, lo looks beautiful as a secret, not going to lie. But one Eldritch monster plus one level five or higher zombie monster. And I believe the ritual spell is, uh, also not a ritual spell, future spell is only like a super or a common. Uh, this card needs to become Eldritch the Golden Lord while it is in the monster zone. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. You can tribute one zombie monster, then type one face on monster. You, or opponent, controls. Take control of it. Also, it cannot attack or activate its effects until the end of this turn. Only use the effect once per turn. Now, this one, because Eldritch is such a... Um... Well, what would you say? I don't think this is this needs to be in an Eldritch deck. Like you probably need one of it. Like you probably play one of it for a bit of fun to have that option. Um, so again, I don't think it should demand high values. But if I was to rate this, I would put it on the third or fourth spot for the price of the secrets. Then we get to War Rock Mountain, the War Rock Field Spell. When this card is activated, you add one War Rock monster from your deck to your hand. At the start of the battle phase, if you control no monsters or all monsters you control are warrior types or warrior monsters, you special on one War Rock monster from your hand with a different name than the card you control. If your warrior monster would be destroyed at battle, you can send this card to the graveyard instead. Now, obviously, the reason this becomes a utility card and where it's in the middle of the pack on value of secrets is the fact that it's generic warrior support. Technically, if you were to play War Rock Mountain plus a small War Rock engine in a Warrior deck, you could, if you combo off with stuff like Fire Flynn and you combo off with stuff like um, Red, uh, Red Layer, you're going to be able to get to Zold without even using your normal summon. So when you look at stuff like Gokis that will utilize a little bit more because they are Earth, but when you look at stuff like Gokis, when you look at stuff like... Um, Infernoble Knights, and you also look at stuff like Heroes, they can actually abuse this early because it means it allows you to get um, an additional warrior monster on the board to get into Resolve a lot early on, and you maintain your normal summon as you combo client up through Resolve to get into your plays, and obviously we know that Resolve can lead to Halley Firebrax, Halley Firebrax can lead to the Aurora Dawn combo, and it goes on and on and on from there. So this is the main reason I think War Rock Mountain sits between the middle of the pile, because it's not the worst, it's not like the War Rocks themselves in my opinion, aren't great. They're an okay TCD exclusive, but a card like this, um, because it has generic value for Warriors, which is probably one of the most popular art types in the game, uh, certainly deserves to be up there and kind of demand a middle ground price. It's not the most broken meta card ever, but because it is a utility card that goes in a Warrior deck, it will probably demand a little bit more. Uh, we'll then move on to the final two, I believe it is. So we've got um, Heavenly, Zephyr, Mirada, Midora, I don't want to call it Midoriya, I'm sorry, my hero is kicking in. Uh, but, Heavenly Zephyr, what can I say? It is a level 7 uh, Wind Dragon effect monster. The activation and the effect of this card's effect cannot be negated. If your opponent special summons a monster with 2,000 or more attack from the edge deck, except during a damage deck, you can special summon this card from the hand. If this card is special summoned from the hand, you can tie one face out opponent's monster that was special summoned from the extra deck. Neither player can activate monster's effect while this... Uh, sorry. Neither player can activate that monster's effect while this monster is face up on the field. Only use the effect once per turn. Now, it's a 2600 de defender, 2000 attack. Again, to me, this is a middle of the pack card because it's generic, but right now there's nothing that's making me go broken. Like, absolutely broken. But it is in the middle of the pack deck. What I mean is there's worse secrets to pull, uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but there are obviously a lot better uh, secrets to pull. Again, I think this one can settle between the £15 mark, um, maybe even a little bit less, considering we don't have physical tournaments. 
Uh, then we move into the final secret rare, as far as I believe it. Uh, so bear me two seconds, I'm just going to pull that one up here. So, that's Arm Dragon Flash, that's the S Bridge. Uh, super rare, that one there, secret there, that one there, that one there. There we go, Underdog. Oh, what a terrible card. Uh, underdog. Artwork, 8 out of 10. Effect? Hmm, wow. So during your turn, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls. Nice, I like that. During your opponent's turn, negate the effects of all face-up monsters you control. Continuous trap card. So, I go first. I set this card. Don't really want to activate it during my opponent's turn because, you know, it's only going to negate my effects. So I'm only going to want to activate it during the end phase of my opponent's turn so that it's effective during my turn. Which is cool. But, battle traps don't survive in the current game. Like, you would be much better off playing a Magic Cylinders or playing a Stormy Mirror Force than playing an Underdog. Because you go first. You set a Mirror Force, okay? That Stormy Mirror, you're going to get attacked that turn. That Stormy Mirror Force is probably going to do more for you than Underdog. And let's put it in this perspective, right? If at a certain point when you go to activate Underdog, Okay, the only difference between Underdog and the Mirror Force is you can activate um, Underdog before they put a Negate on the board. But if they were to put a Spell or Trap Negate on the board, or get rid of a Spell and Trap back row, but if they were to put a Spell and Trap Negate on the board, they're going to turn off your Mirror Force just as quickly as they're going to turn off Underdog. Like, they're not going to want their Appalooza to be negated during your turn. They're not going to want their VFD to be negated during your turn. So they're not going to let this stay on the board. Now, obviously, if you do resolve it, you probably will win because the chances are, if you flip underdog during the end phase of your opponent's turn, they've got no ways to get rid of it, then their VFD, their Shen Shen are dead. They're useless. They're not going to do anything for them. So it does mean that you'll be able to go, right, fine, I can now go off. My opponent's monster's effects are negated uh, and I can do what I need to do, which is very good on that pers uh, perspective. But if, you go, if you're going second with this card, completely dead. If you go first with this card, you still need to survive your opponent's entire turn without dying and without this being destroyed, and then activate it without being negated. Like, it's just not going to happen. A card like this is worth picking up at about £3. Like, I, I like to pick up the secrets from sets when they hit to £3, especially when you look at, like, Warning Point that was a fiver, because they're really good cards that might become better later on. With something like Underdog, I don't think it's ever going to become good, but it's just something that you're better off having at £3 in your collection, in case it ever goes up in value for God heck knows what reason, but it's just an option. This is the bottom of the secrets. Like, this one should not be going for more than, like, £5. It is a very bad card right now. Very, very bad. And I don't think there's anything that will actually make this become better. Like, the only thing that makes this become better is it means that your cards need to... No your monsters need to not interact with your opponent during their turn. And it's kind of like, all right, I kind of get what you're going for. Maybe a control deck works. Great, but then I still need to wait for my second turn to make this live. So if I don't open up with this, every time I do open it up, it's a brick for two turns. Because it's not going to gain me any advantage. Uh, anyway, that is it for the secrets. I'm not just going to quickly go through the rest of the, the general list. I'm not going to go through the entire list, um, but just kind of go for some noticeable cards. So you've got a couple of brand new TCG exclusives that you guys will be able to see throughout the... Um, Throughout box openings and stuff like that, we have got the Virtual World Otohime Toto, or Toto, uh, that is going to be imported as well. The War Rocks, like I said, they've got one Ultra, which is their boss monster, two Commons, two Super Rares, and a Secret Rare. Um, you then look at other stuff as well. So I think the other um, TCG exclusives, you've got um, Meteor Tractor Gigaborus, which I believe is the few, uh, it's an effect XYZ. You've got Trapsisium Dilmon Cocoidus. Um, there's loads, I'm not even going to go. Greater Polymerization, so you get to fuse with three monsters specifically, uh, and they gain two additional effects. Again, they don't have great targets for this, so I'm not even going to... I don't think it's that good of a card, just saying. Don't forget, you do also have um, some support. So you've got a brand new dual avatar card, which is going to be common. Uh, you've got Virtual World Gate Zhang Wu. Uh, you've got Ancient Warrior Saga, uh, Chivalrous pa uh, Path. You also have the... Uh, which is a common... Couple of S Force commons, Arm Dragon Thunderbolt is a super rare. Um, seven Realms of Golden Land, so uh, this was an ultra rare, is the uh, fusion spell. Wind Witch Chimes is a super rare. Um, Great Sea, Great Sand Sea Gold Goldar. Let's have a look at this one. 
think this is the ritual, and I haven't got an image for it yet, but I believe this is the ritual card that you can, uh, if your opponent uh, declares a direct attack, you can ditch him and uh, negates the attack. Uh, spring guns are all relatively low rarity as well, ultra or lower. Uh, I think x uh, the ship, the XYZ, is an ultra rare. Uh, Dragoon ET Knight is a super rare. Uh, Fabled is a super rare. You've got Windrich Diamond Bell, which is an ultra rare. You've got uh, Ornirius the Dream Mirror Tormentor is a super rare. Dual Avatar Empowered My Goyal is an ultra rare. Um, Parametaphose uh, uh, Zorkless is a super rare. Uh, White Bacon is a super rare. Woohoo! That can go into the Skull Savants. Very nice. Uh, Live Twin Leela Treat is an ultra rare. Uh, Ancient Warriors Rebellious Lufeng is a super rare. Nice. Uh, Maha Valo Light of the Heavens is a super rare. Uh, what else we've got? Constella, uh, Metaphose Vanishar, Parametaphose Melcaster is a common, uh, but the Vanishar and the Constella are super rares. Uh, Wind Witch Freeze Belt is an ultra rare. Wind Witch Blizzard Belt is a common. And then you've got obviously the S Forces. Tribrigade Kit is a super rare. Nice. Um, and then the rest of Arm Dragons levels have got supers and ultras. So, after 20 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, now we can answer the question of. Is Blazing Vortex worth to buy it or not? Now, I say this every single time with most of the sets, and particularly with this set as well. It is always worth buying one box. Now, in my opinion, the worst pulls you could get from your box, not including ultras, we won't go into those, uh, value-wise could be uh, Underdog and, let's say, one of the balance cards. So an Underdog, £5, a balance card, £15. So you've made £20. Well, you haven't made anything. You've probably negged, like, £40. But that's the worst. Like, that is the worst part. If you get those pairings, then game over. Yes, the, the secret chases are where the money's at. If you were to pull a pot, if you were to pull the Link 5, you've made your box money back. If you pull a Starlight, you quadruple your box money. Now, the thing with this set is, again, it's kind of like, and I said this to a couple of people the other day, it's kind of like Phantom Rage, in the sense that you've got two very good secrets, Droplets and Triple Tactical Talents, Everything else in the box, now keep in mind that Phantom Rage also had Dogmaticas in it, so it had a very nice core set that was bringing it up a little bit as well. So this is a little bit below Phantom Rage in my opinion, it's very difficult to regain money. So the best value for a box like this is if you want to build, if you have all these decks you want to provide support for, buy a box. So if you want to build Spring Guns, if you want to build, um, if you want to add support to your Wind Witches, your Metaphors, your Fables, uh, Ancient Warriors, everything like that, Buy a box, because then if you pull a good secret and you don't want it, you can trade into whatever else you want. If you pull a bad secret, then you still got all of the cards and the singles that you would have wanted to upgrade your old decks. If you want to specifically build one deck from this set, um, if it is Armed Dragons or if it is Spring Guns, uh, or even if it is S-Force, again, I still advise you to buy a box, because if you buy a box, you can either pull what you might need for your particular deck you want to build, or... You can pull what someone else wants for their debt and you just do a simple straight trade. Now, obviously, it's a little bit more difficult because we are in lockdown, but there is that option there. Um, the only time that I'm going to say to you guys not to buy this box is if you are literally, I just want pot and the Link 5. Then that's a little bit different because if you, if you only want pot and the Link 5, the issue is if you buy a box and you get pot or the Link 5, great. You've probably spent the same amount of money to get that single card and you've gained a, gained a secret and you've rolled the dice to get a Starlight Rare. If you want a little bit more than that, um, you're better, because this is what I'm saying, if you were to go and buy three pots and a Link 5, let's say on lowest, 200 quid, right? That is mm, three to four boxes, maybe? So you're running a decent risk, but you've got to keep in mind, I, I still always, especially with Starlights, advise you to go buy one box. If you want more than just two cards, if you only want two secrets, don't bother. If you want to get a little bit more, if you want some of the support cards, if you, you're interested in like any of the art types as well, go and get them, get a bit of new support and off you go. But, because um, then everything's a bonus. Because if you don't care about the secrets, but you want loads of little bits, you get one box, the secrets are a bonus. Anything you get from the secrets, if you get the high value cards, great. If you get the low value cards, doesn't matter so much. And then if you pull a star, right, you're jumping for joy. So, always worth buying one box, especially because not only one, does it uh, possibly give you the ability to pull a Starlight Rare and double your money, but two, it also supports your local stores during this time as well. Uh, but that is it, guys. So, to buy or not to buy, um, again, middle of the road on this one. If you want more than the two Chase Secrets, yes. If you only want the two Chase Secrets and you don't care about Starlight or anything like that, then no, probably not. And that is it, guys.
Uh, I hope you liked the video. This was, of course, my just opinions, my, my opinions going through the secrets as well. Uh, like I said, if I was to rate the secrets um, going down, obviously number one would be Pot of Prosperity, number two would be the uh, Underworld Link 5, and then everything else is kind of in the middle, uh, being probably Eldritch at three, the War Rock Mountain at four because they are generic, and then you'll be looking at the middle of the S Force uh, Brigade as five, S Force Rapper as six, Heavenly Zephyr Midoriya at seven, um, Armed Dragon Spell at eight, um, Armed Dragon Level 10 Thunder at nine, or swap those two around, and then right at the bottom is Underdog. Now, obviously the middle ones can chop and change as best, but literally top, pot, bottom, underdog. Simple, done. Uh, this is pretty much everything. No uh, uh, designator in this, very, very sad. Um, something that we do need and we hope to get soon. Uh, maybe they're saving that for one of the mini sets that needs to sell a little bit more. But now, as absolutely always, guys, stay safe and happy dueling.